Hello and good afternoon. Uh, like Kristen said, I'm John Ignash. I work with Virginia Cooperative Extension based in Harrisonburg, Virginia, right in the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, Kristen uh, mentioned that part of the scope of the project includes conducting stack emission testing for these technologies. Uh, the field component of the most recent emission test work was completed just two weeks ago on Friday, September 4th here in Virginia. And an additional round of testing is planned for uh, next month, uh, early October to mid-October. Once the final stack test data is available from all locations, this information will be shared in our project report and posted on the website that Kristen mentioned, the e-extension project website. And I believe there's a link to the current version of that website in the chat box. Now, for all the project technologies, stack emission test data is completed by a third-party source emission testing company. And the emission test uh, testing includes carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, volatile organic compounds, and filterable and condensable particulate matter, along with visual opacity of the stack emission plume. Additionally, for most of the project technologies, the emission testing also tests for a variety of other pollutants, uh, such as ammonia, arsenic, dioxins, furans, lead, phosphorus, among many other pollutants. Now, emission data is still coming in, and more uh, is scheduled for October, which will be focused primarily on particulate matter. Uh, so we'll likely have more to learn and interpret over the next few weeks regarding stack emission data from these systems. Uh, but one area of interest from our team so far, or for our team so far here, is particulate matter. In particular, most of the tested units emit a somewhat similar particulate mat matter that ranges from gray to white, and white to sticky to dry. Now, now the pictures below show the white material on a filter used in a recent stack emission test. While the filter media itself is also white in color, uh, most of the white material that you see within the perimeter of the large O-ring is particulate matter that was isokinetically caught on a filter during an approximately one hour stack test. The three other pictures on the right hand side of the slide show the sampling probe and nozzle assemblies that are used during uh, stack testing. Note also the white material sticking to the uh, two of the probes, the, uh, the top picture and the bottom picture. So next step, so what is this white stuff? Now that's part of what we're focusing on now. Now, while we have some ideas uh, from other biomass thermal conversion projects and research literature uh, on what the material possibly could be, uh, we're in the process of, of having it analyzed and are now working to do so. so we've re received these samples from the emission test and have it on the filter, uh, and now at which point we're reaching out to labs to conduct some additional analysis. The plan analysis will consist of performing speciation to identify the compounds and elements present in the material. Now, this will be done our thinking right now, as we look into these options, is that uh, this will be done primar primarily using a scanning electron uh, microscope, SEM analysis. Additionally, we need to get a better understanding of the particle sizes of this material. Now, we've been very fortunate to have the collaboration of Dr. Michael Booser of Biosystems Ag Engineering Department, Oklahoma State University, to provide key information on particle size dist distribution analysis, a PSD analysis, uh, particularly with regard to performance and design of the uh, of cyclone system. So we'll plan to complete additional particle size dis distribution analysis via both laser diffraction and also possibly additional SEM analysis. Uh, this data will be important, and we anticipate this data will be important in identifying the properties of this material uh, for the selected project sites and how to address it. So where we're at now, now we're reviewing and interpreting the emission data that's still coming in, as Kristen mentioned. And like I mentioned earlier, during this process, we anticipate learning a lot more about emissions from these units as all the data comes in and is interpreted. A key part of this work is our project team reaching out for additional expertise for experts on pollution abatement technologies to help impartially, impartially review options uh, going forward. This is something our project team has been doing and will continue to do so as the data informs particular areas of interest. And this stack emission data that's coming in right now is, is, is very much helping uh, that process. Now, some of the key considerations and questions in this process are, you know, how can emissions be improved with the existing system through improving combustion best practices or through improving existing emission control technologies already on site? Are there alternative or complementary emission control technologies that are appropriate given the project scale, a farm setting, parasitic energy requirements, or operation maintenance time and cost. 
and similar issues. Also, how do the different materials, for example, the bottom ash, fly ash, etc., compare to each other? What are their properties? Are there key differences? And if so, how does this affect the value or cost of managing these materials? And with it, the financial analysis of the associated pollution abatement device in the selection process. Now, these are some of the general areas we're looking at. But work's still very much underway as data is still coming in, and additional data is going to be collected in October as the plan. Now, before I hand it back over to Kristen, I'd like to take a, a brief moment to thank all the farmers involved in this project, uh, particularly Mr. Mike Weaver, Mr. Glenn Rhodes, Mr. Matt Curtis, each of whom you'll hear from shortly, hear firsthand experiences with these units, and also thank Dan Heller and Mark Rohr, all for hosting these projects. None of this work would be possible without their hard work, uh, creativity, uh, patience, and willingness to share their experiences with these technologies. In terms of how well or not, warts and all, good and bad, uh, these units have performed and integrated with their farms. So thank you uh, to you all. Also, special thanks to the farmers and many other collaborators listed on our thank you slide here later in the presentation for their assistance and information you've shared along the way.